Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Friesan, and with us for our program today, Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin. Steve McLaughlin represents the 107th Assembly District in New York State. The 107th includes parts of Rensselaer, Columbia, and Washington counties. And we want to thank you folks all throughout the greater Capital District region for joining us for our show. Steve McLaughlin, nice to see you. Good to be here. Thank what you. a start to this 2013 legislative year. Not exactly a quiet uh, beginning. No, no, yeah. no. This one's starting with a bang. No yeah. whimper here. This is a, a, a lot going on at the state capitol. We have been through the state of the state address. We've been through the governor giving his budget to the legislature. We are in full-blown budget debate, mm -hmm. but it's really most of the talk here in Albany is centered around some legislation that came through. Some say the governor rammed through the legislature in an effort to get it uh, done quickly uh, for, for whatever reason. Yeah. And that's the, the gun rights uh, uh, legislation, of course. Yeah, the New York uh, unsafe act, I'd call it. But uh, it was clearly rammed through. It was a, a sucker punch to democracy. It, 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 the people were uh, abused here in this process. I mean, we rushed this thing through. The Senate had the bill for all of 20 minutes on their desk. If anybody's looked at the bill, it's an unreadable bill. There's no way you're going to digest that in 20 minutes, let alone you can't get through it in 20 days hardly so uh, it was rushed through we got the bill in the assembly at 11 o'clock at night and I think we were obviously fully prepared to debate this bill for hours and hours we would have been there all night long the majority decided not to do that so we came back the next morning and we had at it for about five hours it's still a short amount of time let's let's save the process a little bit because mm -hmm. I want to come back to that uh, towards the end of the program mm -hmm. let's talk about the bill itself uh, some concerns about uh, what the bill actually does yeah. for the people of New York State who own certain guns. Well, the bill's a disaster. I mean, it's an attack on the Second Amendment rights of New Yorkers. It turns law-abiding citizens into criminals overnight, ex post facto. Something that they own perfectly legally is now illegal, and if they don't comply, they are now criminals. So there's major constitutional problems with this bill. I think we have a great chance of getting it overturned. People keep asking me, is it going to be repealed? And I say no, because uh, it depends what they mean by repeal. If they mean repealed inside that Assembly or Senate chamber, no. Because if they honored the Constitution, they never would have passed it to begin with. So I don't expect them to man up now and repeal something that is clearly wrong. Uh, but in the courts, I think we have a great shot at getting this overturned. You, you understand where uh, the, the bill originated, the feelings that people have after what happened in Connecticut and Colorado and out in uh, near Rochester, the, the, the first responders that were fired on. People are just desperate to try to come up with something mm -hmm. to keep that sort of thing from happening. Right. But, but I, I was taken in the debate where the sponsors were asked that very question. Would this bill, if it had been in place, prevented any of that? And the answer was no. No, it wouldn't. And, and they admit that freely, as does Joe Biden, uh, the vice president. So none of these laws, because this isn't like this is the first gun law we've had in the books. Criminals do not obey the law. That's a given. That's why they're criminals. So all this does is infringe upon the rights of the law abiding. It doesn't do anything to make our kids safer in their schools. And it's, isn't it interesting that we guard our money, we guard our politicians, we guard our federal buildings, we guard banks, we guard all kinds of corporate offices, but we don't, we're not willing to guard our children. And when we bring that up, all of a sudden everybody goes into a tizzy that how could we even be talking about that? Well, if you really want to protect your kids, I think that armed undercover people in schools is a decent thing to do, at least to talk about and consider. But anytime you bring anything like that up, they go crazy. Because really what this is, it's another gun grab. They want to take the guns, they just don't have the guts to admit it. And as I said on the floor, uh, you know, if you had a real urge to do something, you'd be talking about handguns. Not that I support that, but they would be talking about that because that's overwhelmingly where this problem lies. But as I said, they aren't talking about that yet, but I know that day is coming. And just yesterday, we had a Chicago congressman talking about that, say we need to go after the handguns too. So it took them all of about three weeks before they started to go after handguns. So I don't think I've been more livid, mad about a bill. I've been mad about a lot of bills that we've done around here. None has, uh, has got me as mad as this one because uh, if you'll trample the Second Amendment, you'll trample any of our rights. You were driving them crazy on the floor during that debate because you spoke to those very issues. You threw out the uh, smoke screen, as you called it, of, uh, going, of, of talking about how the, the other side was saying that they understand hunters and hunters rights uh, but you what you took it to the next step and this is really uh, you know unsettled some people in the chamber let's take a look and we'll be back with more with Steve McLaughlin in the end there's all kinds of studies that show gun control is counterproductive you're choosing to ignore them and that's your prerogative but there but the data is out there you can't deny it 
It's Harvard study that I'm looking at here. The CDC has said that there's no connection. As a matter of fact, there's an anti-connection. There's a counter-connection, if you will. There is statistical proof all over the place that as gun ownership increases, murder and suicide decrease. We have heard repeatedly over the past week how we respect the rights of hunters and sportsmen. What about the respect of those people who choose to defend their families? You are limiting their ability to do that when you tell law-abiding citizens to suck it up and put seven rounds in the chamber, and if that doesn't work, good luck, call the cops. Tell that to my people that live in rural Rensselaer County, where the nearest officer may be an hour away because he's on another call. How dare you, how dare you put New Yorkers at risk? You don't have that right. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people, I, I don't think, understood that. I mean, you got to remember, folks, this is a legislature, and particularly an assembly chamber, that is dominated by downstaters who don't understand rural Rensselaer or Washington counties, what those people, you know, how they live. Right, not a clue. I mean, and that's true. The nearest officer may very well be 60 miles or 60 minutes away at night. You know, in Rensselaer County, there's probably two sheriffs on duty. There's a couple of troopers. It's a big county. Same thing in Washington and Columbia County, and really all the way through upstate New York. I mean, it gets even more remote and rural than Rensselaer County. Get up into the Adirondacks. You're on your own up there. So this is just this is just grandstanding, trying to get something done. This was the governor trying to be first, had to be first to get something done. But isn't it telling that every other state in the nation is taking their time and doing this in a measured, pragmatic way? But not New York. New York, we had to jump out there first and get something done so that he could get bragging rights on the national stage. But the result of that is we're seeing the blowback. There's a big demonstration out there today. You start messing with people's God-given rights, they're going to come after you in a bad way. They are not happy about this. They're going to be peaceful about it, but there's going to be a price to pay at the, at the ballot box because I think people that voted for this are going to see, uh, they're going to see backlash when they run for re-election, and they should see backlash because if you're willing to trample on the Second Amendment, the other rights are going to fall quite rapidly after that. And why is it that the Second Amendment seems to be the only right that we constantly have to defend the right to have? Let's uh, go now to that rush to judgment, as you called it, the governor using that message of necessity. You and some of your colleagues stood together just a couple of days ago saying, you know, we really got to limit this. We got to we got to pare this back a little bit. Right. Uh, and let's uh, let's go to a press conference. Some remarks you made at a press mm -hmm. conference on that very issue, and then we'll come back and we'll pick that up. We got this bill at 11 o'clock. Got home around midnight. Tried to read it till about 2 a.m. Here we are, three weeks down the line. And those that wrote the bill can't explain it correctly. The state police don't understand it correctly. The public is completely confused about what's going on. Their rights were trampled in the middle of the night. And we are not here to be anybody's lapdog or puppet or be a rubber stamp. And if we're going to operate this way, why do you need us at all? You can just issue a message of necessity for the entire session, and we'll be out of here in two weeks and save the taxpayers a couple of million dollars. This is not how government's supposed to operate. Now, the governor was asked directly about his use of the message of necessity, and he had two answers for mm -hmm. it. One was that he, he wanted to prevent a run on guns yeah. and the sale of guns. Yeah. The other, this is the one that intrigues me the most, his answer, his other answer was, well, you know, I was worried that if we didn't do it quickly that I'd lose a lot of the votes I had, that some of the legislators would have fallen off the bill and, and not have voted for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, that says, well, then maybe if you want to have an upfront discussion on it, maybe the bill isn't what you think it is. Exactly. Neither one of those answers is acceptable, but both are very telling. The first one is uh, the fact that the governor has seemingly no idea what's been going on in New York and throughout the United States for the past couple years. Guns are flying off the shelves because Americans are afraid for their safety. So that's number one. The, the run that he talks about on these assault weapons that they call assault weapons, that's a political term. That's not even a gun term, by the way. Uh, this run that he was worried about, there was no weapons to buy. They're not on the shelves. They've already been long gone. You got about a six month waiting list to try to get one of these. So that's a nonsense answer. The answer that he's worried about his deal falling apart, well, isn't that telling? Maybe it wasn't such a good deal to begin with. And sometimes democracy's messy, but it's supposed to be messy. We're supposed to work these problems out in hearings and in debates and let the public weigh in so that they know what their, what their legislature is doing and what their governor is doing to them. They didn't get that opportunity. They were robbed of that opportunity to have their voice heard. They woke up and we had this law passed and it's, it's really an affront 
to democracy. So uh, I'm not stopping. I'm not going to stop my criticism of this bill, and, uh, and, and I'm not going to stop my criticism of this governor until this bill gets repealed. There are no amendments that are going to satisfy me on this bill. Uh, the bill needs to be repealed and reworked. That's the only way we're going we're gonna to move forward from this. Let's get some more uh, thoughts from that press conference uh, where Steve McLaughlin stood with his colleagues to talk about the process and how legislation like this makes its way through the system. Our job is to read the bill and debate the bill. For the governor to say it's not a debating society, yes it is. For a couple of days, yes it is. We're supposed to debate the bill in public, not under cover of darkness. When the people of New York are going to have rules and laws thrust upon them, they have every right to understand what those laws are going to be. And we're doing it on some really, really big stuff. We're not naming a stretch of highway here. We're passing bills that affect every single person in the state of New York. And it needs to change. And to the people of New York, I would say this. Wake up. Get involved. Contact your legislator, your assemblyman, your senator, the governor's office, your congressman, and say, we, if you operate this way, you're going to be gone. That's not the way we're going to operate our government. It's time for the people of New York to take back their government. To the press, hold these people accountable. The people that are not on this bill, you should be in their offices asking them why they are not on this bill. You, you, do, you see people uh, interested now in this issue and uh, mm -hmm. paying a little bit more attention now to what's going on in Albany. That is a good thing because uh, so many times you hear about low voter turnout. Right. People, people, you know, people don't care. Then when they vote, they say, oh, there, I've done it. I've done my civic duty. Right. And then they forget about it. I understand people have lives. People have things that they do. They've got family. They've got jobs. They've got. But without an informed electorate who's paying attention to what's going on in Albany or in Washington, things happen. Yeah, and the legislatures in both of those places, as well as capitals throughout the state, will run wild. And it really is, the, the call that I'm making to people, it's, it's we, the people. The people have got to wake up and take their government back. And here's what's happened. For so long, the middle class has been beaten down. They're trying to keep their head above water. They've got taxes that are out of control. They're trying to put food on the table. They're doing their jobs as Americans. But there's one more job they have to do, which is pay attention to what their government's doing and, and rein them in. Because ultimately, I work for the people, and all of us that are in elected office work for the people. And far too many people in this building and in every state capitol and in Washington think that the people work for us. It's not supposed to be that way. So if there's one message that I'm sending out to people, and I hope that I'm able to get my message across to people in a good way, is get involved, wake up. This is your government. You've got to take control of this. It's up to you. I can't do it. It's up to you. You've got to stop the disconnect. Because Imagine if, uh, if the people weren't paying attention a couple hundred years ago in Philadelphia. The Founding Fathers are, are putting this entire grand experiment together. And right. if people weren't paying attention, you can, you can imagine what maybe... Well, you know. we, ne we never would have got off the ground. If the people hadn't bought into their idea and gotten involved and been educated and known what was going on, this country never would have gotten off the ground. Those people would have been viewed as a bunch of rabble-rousers. And to this day, we may be still under the rule of England. I don't know. But I do know this. This is, the, this is, the call, this is our call to duty. We've got to wake up and get involved in a peaceful way. I mean, we've got to change things peacefully, get this country back on track to the constitutional republic that it's supposed to be. One of the ways you folks can do that is to reach out to your local representative, and you can do that with Steve McLaughlin. You can get a hold of him at his office in Castleton. It's right up on Columbia Turnpike. You can call 479-0542 or send an email to the address you see right there on the bottom of the screen, McLaughlin S at assembly.state.ny.us. And uh, I'm sure you're hearing from lots of people about these uh, this gun bill and, and the subsequent uh, press conference. Yeah, for sure. There's been no issue in my entire time in office that has uh, engaged people like this. And I have to tell you, it's been thousands of emails, phone calls, messages on Facebook, the whole thing. Uh, and I think I've had a handful at most that wanted me to support this bill. Everybody else, even a lot of people that believe in what they call gun control, they don't want this bill. They don't want the process. Got to wonder if this bill might be a tipping point for some change here at the state capitol. It could be. Steve McLaughlin, thanks for joining us. Thank you, folks, too. We'll hope to see you soon for our next edition of Assembly Calendar.